From the Great Dividing Range to the Murray, the mighty rivers and wetlands of the North Central CMA region are some of our state's most iconic. They are the lifeblood of our towns, our businesses and our communities and sustain some of our most vulnerable fauna and flora. For millions of years, they have survived on a cycle of boom and bust, continuing to provide in the harshest of climates. But regulation, changing land use and a variable climate has made it hard for Mother Nature to operate as she once did. Dams and channels have changed the way the rivers flow and towns and farms have sprung up on floodplains, showing us that nature cannot be tamed. Managing these rivers and mitigating their impact on the communities inside their catchments is a core function of the North Central CMA. We develop plans and strategies to help towns deal with floods and work with emergency services to protect communities from their full force. Floods were more common before the local rivers were regulated, making managing the health of the region's rivers and wetlands a tough balancing act and another North Central CMA priority. Maintaining and protecting our environment is a core function of the CMA and floods can be both good and bad for the environment. Each wetland has its own requirements. Depending on whether it is a shallow or a deep wetland, whether it has trees, whether it has marshes. It also depends on whether it is close to the river or at the bottom of the floodplain. Depending on where a wetland sits in the landscape, the closer they are to the floodplain, the more likely they were to flood, and the animals and plants that were supported by those wetlands have adapted to that. Further away from the river, they flood less frequently, and you're more likely to see things like woodland wetlands that have another suite of animals and plants that are supported by those wetlands. When floodwaters come in, it can look bad and be very smelly, but in six months' time, it will be amazing. It provides a benefit to the environment. It provides a connection between wetlands and rivers and moves seeds and fish and frogs between those systems. It also moves leaf litter off the ground into the river, which is a really important part of the food web. This can have some negative short-term impacts, such as toxic blackwater events, particularly if flooding hasn't occurred in a floodplain for a while. They can also have a devastating impact on plants and animals if they come at the wrong time of the year. Even though there are some things we want to avoid, when floods do happen, they do provide a benefit to the ecosystem. Australia naturally has boom and bust cycles, and the animals had population sizes that were robust enough that in the bust cycles, the population, the species, would continue to survive. Before regulation, the Loddon River water moved down its tributaries and filled the wetlands. Depending on the depth of the wetlands, the water stayed in the landscape. The water would move through or retreat, but that would leave a lot of deep pools. Which supported a range of water birds at different times of their life cycles. Even when the rivers stopped running, there would still be water in the landscape, water that would support large numbers of native fauna and flora. We are not seeing the bird numbers we once did on these wetlands. Historically, there was always somewhere for them to go. There was always a wetland somewhere in the region that had water in it. With regulation and climate change, we are not seeing that. And in fact, since 19, the 1970s, the numbers of water birds have actually decreased by about 72%. We aren't seeing the numbers of water birds that we once saw. What we have now is so many animals that have not got the resilience in their population that we are potentially facing extinctions if we go into bust cycles. That's very concerning to us. These wetlands are here because this floodplain flooded frequently which provided enough reserves for animals to survive the bust. The wetlands were a refuge, and there were enough refuges and enough diversity and abundance. It is concerning we are not seeing the bird numbers after this flood we should be seeing. There should be birds everywhere. Natural flooding does what we can't do, but healthy river and wetland flows fill in the gaps between these extremes. We have to manage our water in between the droughts and floods. We aren't trying to turn the floodplain back to what it once was, and in fact we are trying to provide the habitat that the entire floodplain once had 
with a small number of wetlands. The value of every wetland is not a single swamp or a single marsh. It is actually at a landscape scale and the value that that provides to those fauna, particularly water birds, that need to move between different wetlands for different parts of their life cycle. We manage the values of individual wetlands for the value of the whole landscape.